Welcome to hold on. It goes off the screen. Hold on one minute. <laughs> Welcome to Bass Banner. Tonight on the broadcast, you have myself, Bernard Muhammad, alongside of me, Tammy Harris, Keith Floyd Noy, Guy Moore, and Jay Beasley. And we have a special guest that's going to be sitting in with us tonight. I'm excited about it. It's going to be Mr. Lemuel Stinson. He was a former Chicago Bears player uh, that played corner, lockdown corner from 19, uh, 1988 to 1990, I believe, 91 with 94. the Chicago Bears. How's everybody doing tonight? All good. 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 Hey, y'all excited? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. You got yeah. So y'all take your shoes off, go get your Kool-Aid, lay back. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a real good one. Hey, this is always an exciting week because we face those cheese heads up north. And I know uh, uh, many of us, when we go to work, this when them, um, all of a sudden these uh, cheese heads start pulling out the uh, baseball hats and all that and talk all that smack. But, hey, I'm looking forward to this year. The Bears is silencing those green cheese heads. What you yes. got, Jay, uh, that's going on yes. as far as – I know you're going to be at the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, you know, everybody wants to say it's not a rivalry. It's not a rivalry because the Packers have beat us so many times. But it is a rivalry. I mean, the Bears and the Packers have been playing since 1920. So, uh, you know, and, of course, you know, they had two quarterbacks versus the gazillion quarterbacks that we've had over this span, over my lifetime span at least. But uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's a new era with Justin Fields. Um, but Green Bay week, Green Bay Packer week has always been, you know, one of those things to me where I'm just like, we can do it. We can do it. I, I look for any little crack or crevice where I feel like, you know, we got the edge here. We got the edge there. I just want to see them come out and play some solid football. And, and, and I'm excited about this week. You know, we talk about a game that could potentially put us in the top of first place. Okay. Hey, Plank, I know you living on the, almost on the border of that Wisconsin borders. What, what has been your experience this week dealing with the cheese heads? Oh, anytime you got a whole lot of people wearing those Packers hats and Packers Jersey and they talking crazy and all that other stuff. And I've been wearing all my bears here from there. You're letting them know, bring it on this week. This time we got a dog playing quarterback. So, we're going to see how this is going to turn out, and I'm more than happy looking forward to this. Okay. Hey, Plank, you won't be alone tonight. You, you're going to have a, a fellow cornerback on here Ooh. with you because <laughs> I know you say we don't get a defense love. So we, you're going to have another person on here tonight seeing the game through the view of a cornerback as well as you. I, uh, I'm excited about uh, getting his view. And also talking through some experience. So I'm gonna try to move through some of this other stuff oh, Bernard, pretty fast. Yes. I also wanted to say Tammy gets her wish. Remember at the offseason, we were talking about Aaron Rodgers was gonna go somewhere else. Tammy was like, No, I want him playing against the Bears so we can beat him. So good good call, girl. Let's bring it on. Okay. Hey, Plank, can you uh, arrange change the order of the video? Because I, I don't want to keep him too long since he, uh, yeah. he's at a game. So I want to bring his video. Then we're going to go backwards to uh, uh, Tammy's top five. So you want to go with him first? We're going to go with him first, correct. All right. Okay. So uh, real quick, hey, Guy, what, what what has been your experience this week with the cheese heads? Man, you know what? I'm lactose intolerant. No type of dairy. <laughs> I wouldn't even spend no money this weekend. Anything I use is credit cards. I don't want to see nothing green. I don't want to see no leprechauns, nobody eating no Lucky Charms, or none of that crap. Everything that I got, and I'm serious about this, man, because this is what we do, man. We lifelong Bears fans. When we get up here and play Green Bay, I have the superstition. I don't want nothing green. I don't want to see nothing green. I won't drink nothing green. None of that stuff. I hate them. There's only one Green Bay Packer I ever liked in my lifetime, and it was Reggie White, and only because he had Jesus in his life. <laughs> <laughs> but on Sunday, but, but on Sunday, and God rest his soul, because he was a wonderful man, on Sundays, Reggie White, your mama. But outside of that, you know, I, I, 
that's the only Green Bay Packet I've ever liked in my lifetime, and I hate despise him on games that we play. So there you have it. You know what? I, I don't think if you add up all our dislike for the Packers together, none of it compares to how much Tammy dislikes the Packers. Ooh, what what has been your experience? I know you're down in Atlanta, Tammy, but you're not seeing those cheese heads, but I know they're posting on your timeline. No, I really only have one cheese head friend that uh, has the audacity to post on my timeline from time to time. For the most part, they know better, but she just honorary, so she do it anyway. Um, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I truly despise like the the cheese heads, and it comes from from childhood. I y'all know I don't like dirty play. I don't know. I love hard play and aggressive play. But I hate poor sportsmanship. And I'm sorry, Green Bay used to be like the Raiders. They used to be dirty. And that guy that used to have a hit list, I swear I forget his name. The Charles guy Martin. Out, uh, Jim McMahon out. The yeah, Charles, the Martin. Martin. Slam Charles Martin. Jim McMahon. Yeah. Charles Martin. I was, I was a kid watching that game. And from that day forward, I didn't like the Packers before, but from that day forward, I absolutely despise the Packers. I, I don't like dirty play. And so, uh, Y'all saw Bruce comment, right? Hollywood, yes. I yes. get that he thinks that the, the, the Bears are, are not going to win, but he just go a little too far with his enthusiasm of saying that the, <laughs> the, 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 that the Packers are going to win. And when I come home, I'm putting you in a headlock. Sleep a hole. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I get it. You think we don't, we're not there. You think we don't fully have all the weapons. But it's any given Sunday. People, people are hurt. On, on both sides. So anything can happen. And it's a matter of who shows up to play. And we have quality players on our team who can make it happen and put in the work. And now that we have a, a, an adequate play caller who knows how to actually call a game and adjust, you know, our players can be set up to succeed. You know, and I think that was one of our biggest problems. The players weren't set up to succeed because they didn't have a viable game plan. So now that we have that working in our favor, anything is possible. Okay. Who, also, who said the ladies said, don't know what they're talking about? Who said that? What you said? <laughs> who said ladies don't know what they're talking about with football? Please. All right. All right. Good Let's job. Tell you Tammy, Tammy, I got right. you. This is why we're going to win. <laughs> I'm delivering this FedEx. It's going to arrive at Soldier Field Sunday morning. And it's for her. It's Nagy's name on it. So if y'all want to sign Nagy, with this. That's Nagy's playbook. That's his playbook and a Chipotle menu. As long as ladies are doing this thing, we're going to be good, man. Hey, let me turn the mic over to uh, uh, my co-host, Jay Beasley. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I want to introduce Lemonhead. I just want to introduce Lemonhead. I swear, this is like really exciting to me because I watched Lemonhead play. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was actually at a couple of games. Like I said, I've been going to Soldier Field since I was 15 years old. So I, I've had a chance to see a lot of people uh, play the game. But I want to uh, introduce uh, Lemio Lemonhead Stenson. He was drafted by the Bears in 1988, the 161st player overall from Texas Tech University. He played five seasons with the Bears. 69 games. He had 42 starts. Stinson had 16 career interceptions with two touchdowns. He also had two fumble recoveries. Um, so I, I just want to introduce this guy. I reached out to him. I told y'all I wanted to try to get somebody that could tell us about the Bears and Packers rivalry. And he had a chance to play in that rivalry. And I want to introduce him. So please bring him on the show. Lemio, Lemonhead. Stinson. Do we want the video first or after? <laughs> yeah, go, go hey, let me run the video uh, right quick. <laughs> let me hear We want to go ahead and roll the video. We want to go ahead and roll the video. All right. Go ahead and roll the video, okay? <laughs> All right, Bernard, you can share? Okay. Is, is, oh, we got a volume. Where's that? Hold on, Plank. Uh, there we go. Hold huh? on. Stinson and You're his fellow Bears it? got the last yep. laugh, Here we go. as Mark Shinovsky reports. At high noon today, the time for talking <laughs> trash was over as the Bears and Falcons went to war at Soldier Field. Lemuel Stinson proved that actions do speak louder than words. 
picking yes, up a pair do. of Chris Miller passes to easily <laughs> outshine Neon Deion Sanders. We baited him into it, so, you know, they, they shot for it. We kept baiting him the whole game. He looked back. I guess he kept telling coach, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. And I was we're looking at him the whole time. I waited for him to throw it. While Stinson was enjoying another big game, Sanders was pretty much a non-factor as he struggled just to handle kicks all afternoon. But the guy who calls himself prime time didn't shy away from the spotlight afterwards. When I walk on the field, I think the players on the other field, players on the other team respect me. And I respect them also. People don't talk to me. You know, they, they're happy when they tackle me and able to me and enable me to do my thing. But uh, there's no ton going on. Only only one guy on their team that's who falls in that category. Andre Risen was also involved in the war of words this week, criticizing Stinson and the Bears receivers. Risen caught a consolation touchdown late in the game and said he really doesn't have any few. Consolation touchdown. I thought the guy after the game, you know, uh, he said he didn't he didn't make those particular comments about uh pretending to me, but he had mentioned him about Dion, you know, but I know Dion was already fired up and I know I was fired up too. He's cool. He take good play, he take good play. And uh, you know, all that talking and just going on just to get it hyped up for the game. But I you know, I think Dion took it a little bit different. Yeah. So Dion's still in no class. Swish. No class. No class at all. And before <laughs> leaving town, Neon on the Chicago fans. And that's pretty ironic, considering the White Sox are one of the teams trying to sign Sanders to a base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great job. Oh, man, that's, that's wild. Yeah, that's wild. I ain't heard that. I ain't seen that in a long time. That's different right there. But, you know, it was, it was all about in the competition and everybody representing, you know, the Bears and Atlanta and 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 and. and Balling out. That's all, you know, Texas versus Florida. You know, he was the biggest corner at that time. I was the top corner at this time. And we wanted to see who was the best. And that day, I was the best. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. He he actually – he looked shook after that game. I I never seen Dion look shook. Hey, well, you know, I'm a, I tell you the truth, man. It wasn't. It was crazy because they asked me how many receivers going to catch. Pat, I mean, how many? Uh, how Dion going to going to do against the Bears? I said I never see him. So when I told them I never see him, they said, you know, they kept asking me and asking me and asking. We sitting in the locker room, getting dressed, getting ready for meetings and practice. And uh, Dion's, uh, uh, they kept asking us. I said, man, we got five receivers. I said, all five of them catch a pass on him, and you know, uh, we're gonna win the game. You know, and, and I'm not I'm, I'm gonna stand up for my receivers. I'm a DB. I got to stand up for those guys over there. And, and somehow it got back to Dion by the media. They called him. The media set it up because they called it and did all that problem talking and. And then he, I got on the phone, and they said, you know, Dion, yeah, who is this whole ass? Who is this? He's talking all cussing, and I'm like, who is this, man? Who is this? I thought it was my grandmother when they called me to the phone. Cause <laughs> really, you don't get no phone calls at practice. I thought something was wrong. And uh, he talking to us, and i like, okay, man. I, you know, I say, who is this? He said, it's prime time. Dion Sanders. I say, who? Prime time. And they got to talking, him and Andre on the phone. They're going to score this at many and all that. And Andre, Andre, one of the best receivers I done played against. You know, he's a good receiver. I don't take nothing away from him. But at that time, I'm going to try to do everything I can to make sure I lock you down. So uh, he did a great job in some parts of the game. I did some good things. And uh, like I say, they got to talking a little noise. But, you know, when you step on the field, you got to either shut up or put up, you know. And I got to put it up. So. <laughs> and you know, I talked. To, I, I I just say I talked to Lil Nas. I just I just I just stood my ground because I like. I, I'm from Houston, but I love Chicago. You know, and that's that's my city. You know, I love it. I don't get back as much as I want to, but I just love the city because the city loved me, and, and it was it was great down there. And I miss the days before cancel culture, man. I miss those days. <laughs> Nowadays, you sneeze the wrong way. Oh, no, he's sneezing over his shoulder. Back then, you talk trash. Y'all go yeah. in like dogs. Y'all fight at the end of the game. It's two, three men come up in the middle, break bread in the middle, shake hands, good game, and you leave it on the field. Nowadays, everybody crying. They on Instagram. They on Twitter. Yeah. What you say about my mama? I played yeah. baseball in college, and I heard some, I, some dudes said some stuff to me. And if I wasn't built for it, man, I'd either be in tears or go get a pistol, man. Okay. But let me hear Lemonhead, yeah. it's almost like, do I want to call you Lemonhead? Do I want to call oh, you Lemonhead? Nah, nah. Hey, you know, everybody called me Lemonhead, so it, it, it's, it's, it's just regular. I mean, I, they don't even call me by my first name no more. They just say Lemonhead. <laughs> so, okay. I, well, I, I, I mean, 
I, I, I had a deal, a deal with Ferrari Pan Candy Company, and, and those guys over there just gave me all the lemon heads I can, I can eat. So <laughs> that was crazy, Literally. you know. Okay, what crazy. I want to know. Okay, what I want to know. The question I want to have: What is it like to be a Bears player? Uh, what is it like to be a Bears player? Dealing Bears, with it's, dealing it's with great. dealing with Bears Packers week. That's what I want to know. What is oh, what okay, is the okay. atmosphere dealing well, with see, that whole thing? Well, see, a lot of people don't understand when we play the Bear uh, the Bears and the Packers. We getting ready for uh, you know I'm getting ready for Stern and Shaw. See, to me, Stern and Shaw was one of the best teams in the league. Right. He just didn't, right. he just didn't right. play long right. enough to uh, prove his point. Yep. And then, you know, yep. we talk noise, stirring in the comment on the phone, say, hey, you know, I'm drinking vodka on y'all right now. I'm like, mm. okay, I'm going to hit this crown on you then. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have enough crown to me because, you know, Sterling and I be bloodshot red and mine be sitting up there looking at it like, hey, we finna do it to you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Reggie White, one of the best players, you know, got Tim Harris who talks so much noise. Yeah. So, yeah. you just got to, uh, you know, it just, it's, just a, it's just a tough week. And Mike Dicker, he he going crazy at the time because you know it, it's it's like a fight game to him. It's like a, uh, 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 Mike Tyson versus Holyfield. Yeah. Okay. 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 A- anybody else had any questions for our guest tonight? Because he's gonna sit down and talk football with us. So he's gonna go through his predictions. He's gonna do his analysis. <laughs> I know right now, I believe he's at a uh, football hey, game. Don't, so. hey, don't, y- don't don't y'all seem seem like it's funny that I was doing all that predicting back then. Now they can predict all over the place now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. I know I watched that I watched that video where you said that uh your agent said that you were gonna get drafted in the first or second round, and then you Time went on and on, and it was like people were pr- cracking jokes on you, and you weren't sure if you were gonna get drafted. And you were thinking about you need to go talk to your teachers because you was skipping classes because you was just sure you was going, and you got drafted in the sixth round, and you thought it was a joke. But how did you really feel? Like, did you keep that agent? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, how did you feel when you actually finally got got drafted? And just you know, what did it feel like? It it was crazy because I was sitting there and everybody was calling. I seen the first round go through, like you said, and then I said, "Man," I said, "Ain't nobody." My agent talking about second round and all this here, and I'm like, "Man," and like I tell everybody, I say, "Man, it's it's a tough thing because I'm sitting at home and I'm in Lubbock over there." Uh, on the couch, just laying down. It was about three in the morning. So I w- we got up and went and got a newspaper as it came out. I said, man, it's 32 DBs that went before me. I said, mm. I said, shoot, I ain't finna get drafted. They, they don't, must don't know what they talking about. So I was getting ready to go to the classroom and talk to my teachers and say, hey, I need to come back and get this class done, this class done, so I can graduate, go get me a job. <laughs> 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 mm. so do something, I got to make some money. I had a little boy. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, nine by 9.30, so off of there, uh, Tobin called me and uh, Mr. Tobin called me and he said, uh, hey, Lemuel Stinson, uh, we just drafted you in the uh, sixth round. Uh, welcome to be a Chicago Bear. And I said, man, stop lying. Y'all, man, everybody been calling me all day telling me, hey, you got drafted, you got drafted, you know, guys and friends. You know, it, back then you didn't have no click over, you know, if you can right. busy, they might have called somebody else. <laughs> 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 so luckily I was on. So it, it did, it worked out for me pretty good. I enjoyed it. Like I said, Chicago is great, but I didn't think I was going nowhere. And that's a tough thing to sit back and, you know, you, some of these guys, they already know where they're going. They, Pick, they gone and everything else. And like I tell, I tell all these guys that got drafted a year later because I only went four years of college and uh, end up getting drafted in the sixth round. But I tell all these guys who went first, second, and third round, if I came out with y'all, it'd have been a problem because y'all probably wouldn't win. There you okay. go. There you go. Hey, you know what, what? The question I do have when I'm listening listening to you uh, as far as playing football in that time. What what is the difference that you see as far as how you approach that game as a corn a cornerback? and how you see cornerbacks play the game currently? These guys play scary. They play scary. <laughs> you know, they're not, they, they, they don't, they don't, they're not, they're not trying to hit you. They're trying to, they're trying to uh, 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 wrap you up, uh, uh, wrap, pull the ball out, act like they want to make a big play every time. It's not a big play every time you step on the field. Do your job. Hit them, tackle, break it up, you know, have technique, do what you need to do. But a lot of guys don't really do that. When we were playing, we'll tell them in warm up, "Hey, dog, we ain't going for the pick today. We're going to knock you out. We ain't trying to. We don't care if you in the game. We ain't trying to hurt you, but we want to put you, hit you so hard where you're gonna think about if you're gonna come over the middle, catch a punt. I mean, catch a uh, 
a out route, curl route, dig route, anything. Mark Carrier, Mark Carrier, limit. I got him. Okay, Ooh. shoot. I ain't even worried about it now. Dave Durson, the same way. Dave Durson hits you and Sean Gale hits you. <laughs> David Tate, it's mm. over with. So, you know. You just named you just named some great defensive backs and Donald for Chicago Wolf. Bass. <laughs> um, so how was it playing with those guys? You know, like like you said, David David Tate was a dog. Oh, David, David Tate David was, was a dog. And then hey. you got Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier had 10 interceptions Ooh. his rookie year. You know, yeah. you you played with some dogs. So how was it? How was it playing well, in a defensive backfield like that? Well, um, with Mark Carey, Mark, Mark Carey was a, Mark Carey was a good safety. Mark Carey used to, you know, Mark Mark was when he got there. I was leading the team in, in interceptions, so I got hurt that year. He had ten, <laughs> but I was going. I was really, I was really get to ten, but he hey, he picked three off in Washington the next week when I got hurt in a uh, in a Denver game. But David Tate, go to go back to David Tate. David Tate was a corner. Me and Tate played corner when we came in as rookies. So that last game against Miami, they getting ready to cut. And me and him still at the corner position. Tate hit this dude on the sideline, I mean, on, on across the middle. I said, man, I might not make the team. He hit this dude so hard. So it, uh, Marino, I think, came back in for a play or something. He ran a post in uh, Clayton. I think it was Mark Clayton, uh, uh, one of those guys. They, they probably was, it was one of the guys. We ran, I jumped up, and I caught a cramp in both legs, and I knocked the ball down in the end zone, and, and, and the game was over. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dicker came on the field. I was hurting and everything. My legs was cramped up, and uh, then I said, whoa, I, I made a play. So we get back the next morning in the locker room and everything, uh, getting ready for cuts and all this other good stuff. And shoot, they were sitting there. Everybody was leaving by the dime. They was just going out, guys <laughs> going out. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> My coach come over, Coach LaRue come over there, me and David Tate. We all were partners. We were roommates, partners, everything. We sit next to each other. And he said, but he came stood right between and said, Tater, you think you can make that play every every week? He said, Yes, sir. I like, oh my God, Tate here, I'm gone. So he said, Well, get the stuff and get on upstairs. I, I'm sitting there. He said, Lemon here. I said, Yes, sir. He said, You did a real good job this week. I said, thank you, coach. He said, well, I hope you can do that every week. Uh, I jumped up, grabbed my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stay. I was gone. <laughs> All right, good job. Thank you, great job. I'm already, I'm already upstairs and looking at my name on the lock. <laughs> hey, I'd like to but thank everybody fun, who's watching us tonight on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch TV, watching Bad's Banner. Our guest host tonight, Sitting in is none other than Mr. Lemonhead Lemuel Stinson. Yo. He played for the Chicago Bears from 1988 to 1992. He mentioned yeah. something earlier, and I wanted to go back to it when he said guys seem to play like they're scared. Uh, uh, Peanut, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Lemonhead, are you saying that is it because of lack of confidence or is it for – Lack of techniques. I, it's just a little bit of both. Some some of the guys don't have company because they don't have company in the technique that they're using. Uh, I mean, a lot of those guys. I mean, it's a couple of guys that's just balling out. That like Ramsey, that Ramsey kid for the Rams, mm-hmm. and a couple of other kids that I watch play. They balling out. But you know, you get some guys. They they not looking back for the ball. They running in the receiver, Absolutely. you know. They Absolutely. grabbing hands, and then yep. they, and then they letting them get deep on them. I mean, I, I don't care what you do, you're not getting deep on me. We because if I can stop you in front of me, I'm not gonna let you get deep on me. You you you, I'm gonna be late on the out route. He catch out route, coach. Oh yeah, he got me on that one, dude. I don't know, but you know, you got to plan, you got to break, you got to knock down, you got to you got to play with. Them. You're not playing those guys. You're really playing. If these guys really know football and understand football, and I was taught by Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary used to say, hey, look at film like you're looking at rerun of uh, the good times. You know, good times come on, you look at the rerun, you know what's going to happen in the next play. You know what's going to happen. So every time you look at film, look at it like you're looking at a rerun. Don't, don't run it back. And um, that's how we did it, and that's how we look at film. So when you're looking at film like that, you get the chance to, you know, figure out what they run, how they run. So you're playing the offense coordinator. Stop trying to play the team, play the offense coordinator. I don't have to play – I don't have to line up there to play uh, uh, Sterling Sharp, Jerry Rice, or those guys. I have to line up to play Jesus the man. offensive coordinator because they got to do what he say they're going to do. Oh, my God. Man. This is, man, oh, man, thank God. you. Yeah, I, I know, I know guy, guy had a question about defending Dante. 
Did you did I, did you have a question about that guy about who now or about defending uh, the receiver for? Yeah, you know what? I, I do have a question because see, this, this is interesting. And before I even go into this, you know what? Some of y'all younger viewers. I mean, I got this fifty two on, and I'm a little bit older than that. So okay. I remember when the central was really the black and blue division. Just like he talked about, he said they go up to yeah. receivers. Hey, I ain't trying to get a rip, I'm trying to knock your head off. And here's the referee standing right there, hearing him talk like, "Oh yeah." That was when it was two. It was two alpha male sets of alpha males coming up. It's like let's meet in the middle. You had guys that were hardcore. Guys a lot smaller back then. They had heart. And number two, you could not get on a football field unless you understood the schemes that you were in. But yeah. with that said, because uh, we 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 see a lot of cornerbacks getting burnt. And a lot of that, and I know, like I said, you went up against Rice. You went up against Sterling Sharp. Uh, some of the great, uh, Just some of the great. I mean, we talk about guys, Hall of yeah. Fame guys. Yeah. And just like I mentioned to you off camera, everybody gets burnt. But I'm still looking for the footage. Every time I would see you, you either get in the pick. And every time I see a receiver, you're here God, and the receiver's in front <laughs> of you. What is it that – what is it – how do you go about as far as uh, – Per receiver, you got the fast ones, you got the, the physical ones. How was it that you were able to go against all these Hall of Fame receivers, man, and just hold your own? Well, you know what? He, he actually wanted to ask you, how would you lock down Devontae Adams? That's really what uh, got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably, I have to look at a lot of film on him. I, I, I find out his weakness. I find out what he like to do. I find out his tendons. I find out how many times he run his routes. I'll look at film on him all week just to make sure that uh, I have him down packed on first down. How many times he do – what he do on first down all the time? What he do on second? And when he come off the block, how, do he come to block you or he trying to run you off? So, you know, you got to look at that type of stuff. You got to see what's going on with the with the personnel once you get into the offense coordinator's game plan. But, you know, just, you know, I mean, Anthony Carter, you, you look at Anthony Carter, probably one of the best receivers in the really? league from Minnesota. Oh, uh, no, he yeah. catches the ball. Like, I ain't talking about the Chris Carter. They call the Carter boys at that time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm talking about yeah. Anthony Carter. Carter. Anthony, Anthony Carter was a right? beast. Uh, Andy Carter, he was so uh, uh, Harry Ellett, you know, guys like that taught me because I was a rookie when I came in and I remember uh, going against uh, the Rams and playing against Henry Ellett and I started that game and um, that I mean, he showed me so many moves, so many routes, so you just got to pay attention to what's going on with these guys. These guys, like I say, nowadays is the, the game is built for the offense but defensively, if you just stay in front and play them and make sure and let them run their route and break as you can, you'll be okay. But they do they do dumb things, not looking back for the ball, not not understanding that you, he fits to run a face. I mean, back shoulder throw. Just turn it to him and put the left hand out. If you're on that side, put the left hand down and just look and get your head back. They're not trying to throw the fade no more. They scared to throw the fade. Quarterbacks don't have that kind of. Some of them had that touch, but not all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. But they always throwing that back shoulder fade. I hate that. I wouldn't even play bump and run on that. I'll stay about five yards <laughs> off and tell them, hey, let's do what you need to do. You, 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 you going to throw that backyard fade? Come on, let's get it. Especially let's in the end zone. That, that, that kills that. me the most right now. Right? So Bobby Bear used to talk to me when I was in Atlanta. Bobby Bear said, you're not going for that back shoulder, are you? No, nah. because <laughs> I'm five yards off the ball. You're on a two, three-yard line, and you're going to throw a back shoulder fade. I'm bumping and running like you're going to run a fade. He got to throw a touch pass to that cone. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hey, it's that dog on Intel 101 right here, man. Mm. Yeah, hey, Plank, I know hearing all this corner talk, lockdown, <laughs> studying your opponent. I know <laughs> I know you got something to say. Plank, what, what, you, what you got, Plank? Come on. Yeah, well, um, you know, now with, nowadays, all of the rules are pro offense. Um, it's almost like you're starting out the game 10 points down before you do anything. What, you know, you shared a couple tidbits. What would you do in today's game? Uh, that would still translate from your 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 previous era when you were playing then. Well, you know, first of all, I will always pay attention to what the offense coordinator wanted, was doing to us. But uh, technique wise, if, if I'm a coach, that. I'm I'm a zone blitz more than I'm a man blitz because I'm a zone blitz. That means they got to find the hole. The quarter, yep. you, you got to make the quarterback think, read, and do it. And and, and you can blitz from it. I'm a, I'm a three four guy. If I was to come in, I'll play a 3-4 because 
it gives you opportunity to move around and the quarterback got to look around and think when you're in the four man front, the offensive line already know how to block you. Everybody, they don't know. They know where the blitzes are coming from. They know what happens if they go here. So it's almost like it's playing, you know, just like throwing catch, throwing catch, throwing catch. But when you're in a three, four, and you send an outside backer, you send an inside backer, you send an inside and outside backer, and you got the D line going, they don't know what's going on. You got to confuse the line. The line is the smartest, the offensive lines are the sm- one of the, some of the smartest guys on the field because they got to do all that blocking. And that's what you want to do. You want to confuse the offensive line to get to the quarterback. Uh, Tom Brady came. That line don't block for him. Tom Brady ain't moving nowhere. He, Brady be sleep. He, he, he like uh, uh, be like the birds. I mean, it was bird yeah. for Kansas City Chiefs quarterback uh-huh. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, he, all he was doing was stand in the pocket. Every time we ran a blitz, we tried to tear his chest. We tried to knock 19 off his chest. I think it was 19. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> every, time, every time we run an outside blitz, I was, I mean, Coach said, hey, we got H back blitz. I love that blitz. It, it, it sent the defensive end up, and I come right up under him. And that yeah. cornerback thing, I'm covering the safety roll down. You, you know, it's his own blitz. You know, that's what uh, 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 Coach for Green Bay Packers a long time ago got away with, with uh, them cats, uh, Dave, uh, Dave, uh, he's offense, he's defense coordinator. I can't think of his name right now, but uh, you know, I zone blitz these guys in the day game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I man up some, but I zone blitz and I play a lot of zone around it because the quarterback's got to find it. Once you get down tight, it's over with. You keep mentioning, you keep mentioning, don't not studying the receiver, but studying the offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. To me, to me, that's really, really key because if you study in the offensive coordinator, you knowing what their tendencies are. Yeah. And if you study in their tendencies, you know what the players' tendencies are. So that's a great, great observation. That's a great saying, observation. Jay, he's studying Nagy. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got to study Nagy this week, remember? He ain't got to study Nagy this week. Let's, 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 let's hope we ain't studying. <laughs> Let's hope we ain't studying him this week. He's gonna do something, you know, exciting. I mean, the other guy do something exciting, but I, I, I do think that if you all, if you're a fan out there, and, and and people are watching the show, jot down the first 15 plays of any uh, script at the beginning of the game, and then when you jot down those 15 plays, go back and see how many of those plays he's gonna run again that they re-ran. in that same Absolutely. game. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yes, and then Absolutely. that's when you that's when you get your key. That's when you know what's going on. And that's when you can really see what football is about, about the offense playing against the defense and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. Good job. Absolutely. Hey, hey, Tammy, did you have a question for him before, before we get into football and Packers week? Yeah, I want to I want to ask something, because um, as much as somebody thinks that I don't love defense, I do because I grew up on Chicago Bears defense. So I'm really hard on the defense. So I'm just really curious. One, you said that the players today don't study, which that that very well may be true, and that they lack technique. But do you think – would you coach on, on, on the defense, and do you think that the Bears' defense would benefit from bringing back older players, former players like you, Singletary, and other people to coach and mentor the players that play now? Because I feel like you feel that they play – they don't play with a lot of heart sometimes. Hey, hey, he, he can coach Dookie Shelley. He can yeah. coach Dookie Shelley. <laughs> right. Right. It's hard now, man. I, I, would, I would love to come back and coach in Chicago, uh, uh, do some things in Chicago. Uh, he'd be a mentor to the DBs and, you know, kind of give them that attitude. And there's enough guys out there that can go do that. But I don't think uh, – I think Mike Singletary would have been a great fit. Uh, Ron Revere, you know, Ron Revere, you know, been there. He had been a great fit. So, you know, mm. a lot of the old guys coming back would be good. It's just that, you know, back then they, we couldn't come in and coach after we got done playing. They, it, it was like, uh, you know, hey, we couldn't do it. They, You know, you can't be a coach and a player and a coach. Now you see that we can and everybody can do it. And we've been trying, but just never had that opportunity. But now guys having that opportunity now, like Brian Le- Leverage, I mean, he's doing a great job. Uh, you got uh, uh, Eric Bieniemy over there in uh, Kansas City. Yeah. So you know, so, you know I, think I think bringing some of the ball players back. Now, I, there's no way I have Richard Dent in Chicago and not ask him to come work with my defensive end. There's no way right. I would I'd be down there. You know, I, there's no way I would have Mike Singletary. Not you know, everybody talk about Erlacher. Erlacher to me was a safety. I mean, he just got that got happy and just played. Don't get me wrong, he did his job. He had a good time, but he wasn't no Mike Singletary. I seen Mike think I seen Mike Singletary in the Green Bay Packer game hit the, hit the guard, 
hit the fullback, and then knock the running back almost out of the game. I think we looked at – I think Vince Tobin showed that play about 22 times that time, <laughs> just running it back and forward in that meeting the next day. Okay. <laughs> I was an advocate for making Singletary our, our defensive coordinator. I said it on the show. I was rooting for it. I was excited when they interviewed him, and then I was mm-hmm. like, really? But, you know. I think I think I think more Mike is more strong minded and strong and it's it's kind of tough for uh I think it'll be tough for Ted Phillips and those guys to kind of sit there because Mike was a player and now that he's the coach. And I think that's why Ron Revere hadn't been back. Because if Ron Revere is coaching like he was coaching in uh Charlotte and then doing what he's doing with the Redskins, there's no way he shouldn't have been the head coach down there in Chicago. Right. Okay. Ron Revere. Hey, you know what? What we like to do is thank everybody who's watching us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch TV. And we definitely like to thank our guest tonight, Mr. Lemonhead Stenson, who's sharing a wealth of knowledge and experience uh, when he played in the uh, NFL for the Chicago Bears. And uh, he's generous enough tonight. He's going to stay on and share uh, his experience with us as we go through this Bears Packers week. And we wanted to do a quick recap of Sunday's game where the Bears defeated the uh, Raiders and what we could use as far as what we saw in that game. Uh, one of the things I saw in that game that i like to share that I think could carry over into this game is a consistent running game. The, the Bears ran the ball, I believe, about 34 times in that game. 37. 37? Okay. The Bears need to stick to that formula of running. As far as uh, uh, Jay, what what do you see from that game that you think that they could carry forward into this game? Running the football with a rookie quarterback, you got to keep him safe. Running the football, even though we got a couple of injuries, which we ain't got to that yet, but we got a couple of injuries in the at the running back spot. But you have got to run the football. You got to continue to run the football and play good defense and play good defense, which is what they did to defeat the Raiders last week. You know, people want to say the whole John Gruden thing has something to do with it. Well, you know, hey, that ain't got nothing to do with us. That ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We out there to win a football game. So whether y'all distracted by y'all coach doing some dumb stuff, ain't got nothing to do with us. So if we could – what I'm taking away from that game is us being able to run the football and play good defense, get pressure on the quarterback, and – just do your thing. Just do your thing. Okay. Hey, Lemon here. Did you see the game uh, last week? Yeah, yeah, I saw the game. Okay. I, I, I like. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Justin Fields. You know, offensive guys. You really, you know, I played offense all my life, all the way into my last year of college, and then I moved to defensive back. So I'm, I'm an offensive guy by, in, by nature, but played the defensive part when I got to the pros. And uh, you know, for as us, like I say, we got to play good defense at all times. These guys got to step up and say, hey, no matter what predicament the offense put them in, they got to be able to go out and put out that fire. Whatever it is, wherever it's at, hey, if you're going to give up three, give up three, but don't give up a big score real quick. But, you know, offensively, Justin Fields, he, he makes he makes us better by him being on the field. You know, running, you know, throwing or, or, or we running the ball or – him getting outside the pocket and not getting sacked. I think one game he's trying to just sit in the pocket. It wasn't for him. He, he don't. He's not a sit in the pocket type of guy just yet. He can do that late on down the line. But you know, right now he need to move his feet, get outside because all offensive line is not as good as we want them to be. But they getting better. Okay, thank you. Hey, guy, what what do you think from uh, the game on Sunday that we could carry forward into this Packers game? Uh, we call it kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's like this. It's almost like, how can I make this analogy? You got a pizza, you need to cook it. You don't cook it with a blowtorch. You don't have some fat dude blowing hot air on it. You put it in a damn oven. Just keep it simple. What I like to see is I like to see the blocks. I, I, I saw what they were doing for Herbert. I, I saw how they were, uh, this, uh, he was coming up for different types of uh, lasers, coming different type of blocking schemes to get guys loose. And guys were hitting holes and doing great. Yeah, you definitely got to run it. But stop doing this east-west cute stuff. Just go north-south, put it down their throat, and they see that they've got the success to running the ball. Now the passing game opens up. And to be perfectly yeah. honest with you, just like I said about Green Bay, it's no disrespect to them, but this is probably maybe the third or fourth worst team they've had in the last 10 years. And they've got some injuries, and they can be beat, man. If we just mm-hmm. keep it simple, do the stuff we need to do, and stop trying to be cute, man, we can get the dub. Okay. Hey, Plank. Um, 
What 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 do you see that we could do that we could carry forward into this game? We want to mirror what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. Stop the run first of all. You know, limit the run. You know, they've got a pretty good running game, so we have to actually shut that down with our front seven. And I think we got a good chance of doing that. From an offensive standpoint, everybody's coming to the fire. We got tight ends that are blocking. We got wide receivers that are blocking. Uh, the efforts by the offensive linemen were amazing. I saw so many different pancake blocks. I couldn't believe I was watching the same game. So we got to bring that same intensity and get after Aaron Rodgers, put him down. We ain't trying to hurt him, but, you know, he's a really Here smart we guy, so we got to limit <laughs> his opportunities. So we do Here that, we I think we're going to come we gonna come across uh, victorious at the end of this day. Okay. Hey, Tammy, what you have? I would just, you know, I would echo what y'all said, you know, um, run the ball, play great defense, um, get the tight ends more involved, which is what I said after the Lions game and, and in the Raiders game, they did get a little bit more involved. It was good to see Justin throw a TD to Horstead. It was great to see Jimmy Graham help push um, Williams. Was it Williams? Williams. Uh, yeah, well, those, 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 those extra yards, those extra yards. Like I just, we have to get everybody involved and not be predictable. So just go in with the game plan like we have for the last two games. Okay. Hey, you know, I was thinking about last year, the Packer game was one of, we had one of those funniest moments of the show. <laughs> Matter of fact, I want to <laughs> go back to that uh, one, a short clip from that Packers uh, game last year when we were talking uh -oh. about the Packers week. Uh-oh. Okay. And I switch TV, but I just want to recap our scores real quick. We have guys, uh, the Bears winning 24-20. Plank has the Bears oh, winning 25-23. Yeah. Tammy has the Bears winning 33-30. I have the Bears winning 38-33. Jay has the Bears losing 38-17. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I got Jay. You got me going into witness protection, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even See, know. and you know what? I, I take I it from me. Oh, hey, who is Jay? Who is oh, Jay? Who is Jay? Yeah, you know yeah. my cousin Peebo. Yeah, I don't know Jay. I don't know no Jay. I don't know. Oh man! Oh, hey, ironically, that that was for the Packers game. <laughs> I know we're gonna let you let you live that down, Jay. But that was for the Packers game when uh, oh, Jay was the only one uh, who had picked. The Packers in the game, and uh, Mike, who comes on the show, was making fun of Jay. Picking the Packers, hey, and, uh, he's and he like, was the only one that Jay. Was... <laughs> hey, but y'all know me. Y'all know, know me. Right. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. Yeah. I'm a season ticket holder. I'm a realist, and, and I keep it real. And, and and last year was one of those years where I was just like, you know what? Huh. Yeah, I can pick him as a homer, but uh, you know, don't, don't come and try to do that same thing today. You ain't getting away with it. <laughs> Security. <laughs> Hey, hey, Plank, let's let's cue up Tammy's top five, and we get the top five, then we start going to p predictions. Actually, it's the top 15, but okay. It'll be top 15. Okay. Got a video that's like the top 15, so I had to make notes. I have my yeah, top so, five, but now we got 15. So. Yeah, we got 15. So. Ready when you're ready. I can't remember 15. So uh, we got the roll, right. Tammy. All right, let's go. So I know on this first one, we got one of these uh, pancake blocks that uh, he loves so much. Uh, was doing oh. got the <laughs> Number two was a TD pass that was broken up. It was meant for Edwards. There were three bears in the vicinity. All the one of them was just standing around acting like you're doing something. Y'all know. No <laughs> uh, Number three, we had Grant with a nice little kickoff return for 25 yards. Uh, he, he, he has some moves on him. He made a little bit of progress. Number four, coming up, we had uh, Damian Williams. I think, I hope this is still in the same order. Yeah, this is Damian Williams. Yep. Damian, we had Damian. Yeah, Damian Williams with a nice little run from the 24-yard line to the 10 to get us in the red zone. This was Justin Fields' first TV pass to a horse stand. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to show that one. Definitely got to show that one. 
getting our tiny and tiny ends involved. This one, you all know, is one of my favorite moves because I love Smith moves. So ankle breaker. Yeah, Williams coming in, do a little Smith move that I like for a touchdown in the red zone. This was one of three sacks for a loss. So this was Mac getting it done. He had Mac two attack. of them. We had two of those. We got it. We're gonna show the other one a little bit later. Then we had a, a, a handoff um, from Carter Jacobs where they got absolutely nothing. They were stopped cold. And then this one was a nice, beautiful interception uh, by, by DeAndre Houston Carson. That was just lovely to see the defense getting, getting the takeaways. Then we had Travis Gibson getting another sack for a loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Young boy. Y'all gonna hear that name a lot. Y'all gonna hear that name a lot the next couple of weeks. Here we had Fields with the short pass to Robinson. It was a little hot, but Robinson jumped up, had great hands, did what he had to do. So they working on making a connection. Then we had a nice little pass to Mooney and a really tight window for a first down that we picked up and that we needed. Definitely. And then on the next play, we had our super, 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 super reliable field goal kicker. This was his 33rd consecutive field goal. Um, he won a roll 46 yarder to give us a little bit more cushion. Then this was another sack from Mac, Mac attack. And then the final play that we are showing is just the, the final nail in the coffin that uh, took out any last hopes that the Raiders thought that they might have and, and you know, with just a minute left to give us a six-yard field goal for us Bad to win up. to meet a nine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was nice. All right. All right. Bad Bad nice. I know ended up being a little Bad bit more than uh, Tammy's top five, but Tammy's 15 was good, too. <laughs> Bad <laughs> down. Bad hey, down. So, you know, as we move uh, to start talking about what's the, what we think is going to happen in this game, one of the things that's important when you look at this is what does the injury report look like? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, Guy, if you, doesn't, you don't mind going over the injury report, let me bring it on the screen. Bears versus okay. Packer. Game week six. Nice graphics. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, you so extra. Yeah, yeah. Put on my glasses. Yeah, right big, there you go. Okay, <laughs> Eddie Jackson. Uh, me, questionable. Duke Shelley's got an ankle. He's questionable. Akeem Dukey. Hicks' groin, questionable. Khalil Mack, foot, questionable. Allen Robinson, ankle, questionable. Damian Williams, the COVID list, out. Looks like he's going to be the only one out. On the other side of the ball, man, Kevin King's shoulders out. Dennis Kelly's back is questionable. Elton Jenkins, ankle questionable. And Malik Taylor's got an illness, and he's questionable. Interesting. They got some major players out here. Let's see. Um, Eddie Jackson questionable, even the... when he in there. Right. <laughs> so, so one of the things when you look at that is it, it kind of – it wasn't really anything real significant yet that to me makes a difference in the outcome of the game. But one of the other things I do want to uh, go over before we start getting into the prediction is how the offense and defense ranks for both teams. Clint, can you make that a little bigger? Let me get on my reading glass so I can see this. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you too. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> one and a quarter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, the Bears' yeah. offense is ranked 32nd. Our the, they yeah. averaged 16.6 points a game. They went up 0.6 because last week it was 16 points. They average 126.6 rushing yards per game. They average 100 and look like that 13.2 yeah. passing yards. Okay, on the other side with the cheese heads and the, the whackers, their offense ranked 22nd. They average 24 points a game. They rush for about 100 on average, 100.6 yards, passing yards. 247. Let's go over to the defense for the Bears. This is the strength of the Chicago Bears is the defense. It's always been the strength of the uh, defense, and that's why it's so fitting that we have a Chicago Bears player, former Bears player from the defense. Lockdown corner. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Lockdown corner. You know, and, and it's something because being a, a, a lockdown corner today 
is a specialty. Yes, yeah, yes. You know, and that, that was, you know, I mean, that that was, you know, everybody could cover their man. I seen like back in the day. Then you had those special guys like Mr. Lemonhead that would lock you down. But like now, <laughs> it's just everything zone because people can't cover nobody. And he got some people too. That's <laughs> why you know what? You call him a filthy thief. <laughs> you call him a filthy thief, and it's actually a really good thing. Right. Lemonhead, you, you would have been paid in today's game. A lot of money. Hey, God. hey right. you tied real well. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. So the the uh, the Bears defense is ranked uh, eighth. Eight. They went up from twelve la uh, twelve last uh, week. They allowed twenty points per game. We got to work on that because the offense is only averaging sixteen points, and the defense is giving up twenty. So the offense is going to have to pick up uh, offense production because I think the last time I looked, there was about. 12 teams that score 20 points of less per game as far as the average. So the Bears are one of those 12 teams. So most of the league at least scores at least 20 points on offense. And so where the Bears defense is at is right at the average of where the def- you know, offensive teams score. So in that aspect, that means the Bears – offense needs to pick up their production they rush about uh they give up about 102 yards 102.8 rushing yards a game they allow about 226 passing yards let's go to the other side then we can start getting to these predictions uh the cheese heads the whackers right their defense is ranked six just a little bit ahead of the bears they allow 24.4 points per game so they actually give up more points than the bears defense give up they they average uh, rushing yards they give up 102.2 and they allow 216 yards per game okay hey let me look at grab a couple of uh, facebook users comments over here okay we have a comment from alvin uh, one of my classmates alvin said commitment to the run has improved the o-line play using their strength to go to the D instead of sitting on their heels, open up for the pass. Andre, Andre coming out of Atlanta. Andre says, based on the stats, look like it's going to be a battle of the defense. Man, that sounds like music to Lemonhead and Plank. <laughs> <laughs> they want to put it in our hands. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. Right. So, hey, with that said, Let's go over here. Hold on, let's look at some of the uh, bragging rights. Uh, what we, we, we do, we kind of keep a tally. And I, I forgot to change the order because quick should be a little bit further. Uh, quick, quick. His record is three and two. Guy is four started and out one. three and zero. Oh. <laughs> huh? He started out three and zero. Oh. Started out three yeah, and zero. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah he did. He did. Yeah, he was out here bragging how he he was undefeated, and now he lost <laughs> two straight games. Now he got agony of the feet. Guy uh, Jay, Jay is four one. one. I'm three and two. <laughs> Plank three and two, and Tammy is three and two. And okay, we're gonna let's move over here. Okay, let's let's go over to. I'm trying to think about what we wanted to go to. So w- when we look at this game, a hey, hey, plank. Oh, you got the thing ready. I'm sorry. So uh, Tammy did a, a a composite of uh, some of the Facebook users. We have a Facebook fan page called Bears Banner Talk Show. And so she put together some of uh, a summary of what was going on there. Uh, what you have it, Tammy? So we had a total of 69 people who uh, are, are rooting for the Bears and, and hoping that they uh, pull it out. And 23 that went for the Wax Pack. So uh, we normally break down. In, in this game, the, the, the Bears are a four and a half point underdog according to the, the, the stats um, out in Vegas. But in our poll, when I look at the scores that we do, we even though we have more people rooting for the Bears, the people who rooted for the Packers seem to think that they're going to win by a more substantial amount. So um, overall, it kind of put us at, us at making maybe one point under up overall. More of us voted for them. So um, uh, we have some people, I know, uh, what's his name? 
Fuck. Fuck. I didn't I didn't I didn't think his fuck you issues. He said the Bears were going to lose uh, a, a bazillion to, to teams <laughs> or, something, <laughs> or something like that. So God, I didn't put his story on there, but I did want to call him out because when I meet you, we don't have to have a conversation. Hey, don't play with Tammy. <laughs> no, fuck you, issues. <laughs> we don't have to have a conversation. But um, y'all know, you know, uh, we we had Hollywood and we had Russ. And when I come home to Chicago, we don't have to have a discussion because I know both of them very well. And they are just going against my bears a little bit too much. A little too much. Okay. Hey now let me hear when you look at this matchup, what do you see as the strengths and weaknesses for both teams as as we enter this to try to come to uh, before you actually give your prediction, what what are the strengths and weaknesses for both teams? Well, I think Chicago weaknesses probably uh, they got to pick up their throwing game a little bit. Uh, you know, as long as they run the ball, they'll be okay. I think they strong. I think it'll be strong if they use uh, Justin Fields' legs. Uh, defensively, we got to we got to make sure secondary wise we ready to, we really can pay attention because Rogers can throw the ball, no doubt about it. he can he cannot not throw that ball. So we need to we need to that's our weakness right there because D line with Mac and those guys coming if they get there we'll be okay. But it's just getting them get to get there. Um, the weakness of the Packers, man, they 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 gotta. They 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 kind of they kind of correct right now because they're playing pretty good in certain areas. You know they blocking well, they running well, they throwing well. So you know it's gonna be a good game. I got the Bears no matter what. We ain't lose a draw. I don't care nothing about it. My shit. No, that time. <laughs> so I can't tell you. I can't. I can't sit here and say you know Hell. they can have the best game in the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> They got the best game in the world. We still, I'm still going Chicago Bears. Hey, we all lost. Okay, we'll see y'all next year. <laughs> uh, next week. <laughs> hey, hey guy, what do you, my boy. Right, hey, guy, what, what do you see as far as the strengths and weaknesses for uh, both teams? Well, well, we're Green Bay. I mean, you know, as long as you have Aaron Rodgers, you have veterans out there. You know, it's it's a, a repetitive thing. It's like as the years go on, there's just certain things that you're so used to running and – personnel that you have you don't have to explain things like there's certain things like you don't have to think about it you can throw to certain plays you know guys are going to run a certain way and do things so they have that but like i said uh this team out of the last 10 years is probably maybe the third or fourth worst and truth be told instead of being four and one they technically should be almost like two and three so to speak i mean you know you just had guys that couldn't kick field goals but we have Santos Claus. And I think that uh, with the Bears, like I said before, something that I learned, uh, if you're going up against a high-powered offense, a team like that, the one way to kind of take away those points is to control the clock. They can't score if you got the ball. So yeah. I do think that. I mean, I think that as long as they let Justin use his legs, they run the ball, guys just stay steady. And I don't never want to see another safety in my lifetime when you're looking at the camera, you see the back of his jersey and in front of him is a player. That ain't supposed to ever happen in Pee Wee at football all. or anything. <laughs> None of that. So, and I think our defense, you know, we're banged up, but you know, it's some grown men making some grown money that's been doing this thing. And I think we're going to be pretty good, man. But we need to just go ahead and just be consistent, control the clock, and don't make no stupid uh, penalties, man. Okay. Hey, Plank. I know you love defense. What do the Bears need to do defensively to stop Aaron Rodgers? Hit him in the mouth. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to be nice, but at the end of the day, it's going to be who can get to Rodgers, whether or not Mack and Quinn can actually put a little bit more pressure on him than he's used to just sitting back there. I counted where he got like seven seconds to throw last week, and that's ridiculous. we got to limit him to under four seconds uh, for, for a play. And then I think we get a chance to uh, actually beat him. From an offensive standpoint, Justin Fields has got to uh, show out. He's going to do some things that uh, we've seen him going uh, doing all the way back to college. And I, you know, I'm with uh, with Lemonhead. 
No way I'm going against the Bears this week. Bring it. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay, I know, I know you when you see receivers run those routes. I mean, Jay is just as passionate about receivers running a route correctly, just as much as Lemmy Hill and Plank are about a corner locking down a guy, uh, probably more so hitting them than actually intercepting it. But Jay, what, what do the Bears need to do offensively to get those points up? In this game, because what that's they gotta what do we offensively. Beat. Yeah, well, what, what, they gotta, what, they gotta what the Bears got to do offensively. Yes, what the Bears got to do offensively is if if the Bears can continue to run the ball like they've been doing the last couple of weeks, but extend that as I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, marry the passing game to the running game that they've been doing. I think they can be successful. So. As you run the ball, if you can extend that same running game with the passing game, I think you can be successful. Justin Fields, he can air it out. You got some receivers that can go get it. I still ain't seen um, uh, Marquise, uh, Marquise Goodwin, you know, going down the field. I still ain't seen uh, Demir Bird going down the field. You know, we know we got Mooney. You know, we got Allen Robinson, which is the possessive receiver. But if they can marry – this running game to the passing game, they can score some points. They can score some points. Yeah. Okay. Now, Tammy, I, I, I really don't want to ask you this question, but what I do want you to share is Tammy put together some historical information in reference to this rivalry. I mean, I just wanted us to go into this uh, thinking about, you know, some of the historical data. Matter of fact, I had got something off Facebook. Hold on, let me share this before I go to Tammy. That I think is one of the things that a lot of us struggle with. Hold on. It was Talib Muhammad. He put on Facebook, this is a real tough one. Mostly because typically, based my vote is on how I think the Bears can win versus are they more likely to win. If I choose the Packers... I'll be rooting against myself, and that's difficult. One more week with my heart. He, so he picked the Bears in this game. So that's Good interesting. Call. So, Tammy, uh, <laughs> can you share the little, uh, history of the rivalry? And we, I mean, I'd like to thank our guest, uh, Mr. Lemonhead, for staying on so Great graciously job. with us. No no I no really no do no appreciate no your time. I, I mean, it's an honor having you on there. So I, I, I didn't want to. Just take that for granted, because I know you had a, I think, at a football game right now as well. Oh yeah, I, they don't, they don't get going to the second half, so we'll, we'll see what happened by the second half. Okay, but, hey, but I like to do one shout out to my cousin Bree. She, she called me, and huh, Jay got me. You know, <laughs> you know, she said you better come on the show. And I ain't, I ain't even talked to her on the phone, but I'm about to call and all that. But hey, guys, I, I enjoyed it. You, you guys do a great job and having fun. And I know Jay, you down there in Chi Town, so get some, go to Bob Chin's restaurant and get some of them lobster. The tails. Woo. 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 You know, I was gonna say, you know, I was gonna say, well, you know, Lemon, I'm a season ticket holder, so I'm, I'm gonna be at the, I'm gonna be at the game Sunday. Yeah, I'm gonna be, at the gonna be there. So, so yeah, so there we go. Yeah, we go. gonna be there. Y'all, all y'all gonna be down there, man. Y'all have fun, man. I might have him miss it, but uh, next okay. year we're gonna put something together where the '88 uh, rookies get back to Chicago because okay, you know good. At, good. the '85 Bears was the best defense ever. But you know when we got there in '88, they kept more rookies on that team, and uh, our numbers was just as good as the '85 Bears uh, as far as uh, number wise on defense. We lost to the 49ers, but hey, you know we'll get them later. <laughs> okay. A lot, of, a lot of people don't even realize too that that '90 squad y'all had at y'all y'all defensive backs had 24 picks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, hey, they they were just rolling the ball in the ground, ground, baby. Yeah, hey, we took it over. <laughs> they just rolled, they weren't even passing. They were just bowling the ball like somebody just get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Hey, Tammy, uh, what's going on with the historical data you have here? Let's, let's see if we can bring this so, up. So y'all know, I'm always going to root for the Bears to win against the Packers. I'm always going to want to believe that we're going to dig in deep somehow, no matter how bad we are, whatever year, and pull out a win against the Packers because this rivalry actually goes back, I mean, 100 years. And people want to, Jay, I can't believe somebody said that they don't want to say it's a rivalry. It's one of the oldest rivalries in football. You know, Those people that don't know football, though. 
you so know, it is what it is. <laughs> the Bears and the Packers have paid, played 202 games. The record is 101, 95, 6. The Packers did not start leading in this rivalry until 2017. And one of the main reasons they started winning in the rivalry is because of how bad the 90s were. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have never caught us. I mean, Dave Wonstad was like the worst coach and he had like the worst, one of the worst records against the Packers. But, you know, um, this this rivalry, you know, it did it pulled something out of the, the players, even when we're having a rough year, and it pulled something out of the fans, I believe, for us to almost at times want to will them to win. You know, so Yes, we only have one Super Bowl um, ring. They have four. We've been to the Super Bowl twice. They've been five times. But this rivalry, um, is, 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 to me, is, is something special. And no matter how bad we are, I will never pick the Green Bay Packers to win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray that we pull it out. And we had two coaches. Who are who played more than ten games? Who were the winningest coaches um, against the Packers? And of course, there's Papa Bear, George Callis, and our Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka only four four games to the Packers. Fourteen games he won, four he lost. But he is definitely one of the winningest um, coaches. So, you know, you know, my pick for this game is 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 Bears um, all day long. Uh, I say the score is going to be twenty four twenty. And what I'm praying, oh, did we get into the Am I jumping to go? No, 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 you right on time. Okay. Um, I, I'm praying that we pull it out. I think our offense will definitely score more points because we know last season under Nagy, <laughs> offense started averaging 25 points a game. So I think we're definitely going to move up from the 32nd rank. Um, in offense, it's just going to take a little bit of time, but I think. I think we have more positives going in our direction. The negatives, of course, everybody knows the secondary is weak. Y'all all said that that is our weakness. But I think the offensive line is starting to gel. Justin Fields is finding his rhythm. He's connecting with our receivers. We found our running game. We have an adequate play caller who knows how to call a game. So I think we have more positives going, and I think we're going in with a lot of positive momentum that gives us an optimistic outlook on why we can pull this game out. Okay. Hey, who who wants to go next on their prediction? I got it. You got it, Mike? Okay. I'm going to go real simple. Bears, 27. Packers, 26. Bring it on. <laughs> wow. One point. Wow. There you go. There you go. <laughs> who, who, who wants to go next? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, you guy. want to go, guy? Nah, you got, guy? Okay. It's going to be a closer. And I think Santos Claus is going to kick a field goal to win it. 24 21 Bears. Right. Okay. Uh, I share mine. Um, I, I have the Bears winning 21 17. Right. Okay, hey, we down, we down to the Jay wow. Jay. Wow. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can let's, let's, let's have our guests uh, get the uh, yeah, I was gonna say, say I'm gonna let Lemonhead go last. I'm yeah. gonna let Lemonhead go last, but uh yeah. like I said earlier in the week, you know, uh the Packers got a lot of injuries that I think that we can ex- uh, uh, exploit, especially on the offensive line. Our defense is playing well, our defense is playing well. You know, uh, if we can get to Aaron Rodgers, which we should be able to get to Aaron Rodgers, and if we can continue to run the football and marry the passing game to the running game, I'm picking the Bears in an upset because they're not they're not they're not favorite, but I'm picking the Bears in an upset. Bears twenty, Packers sixteen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're still friends, bro. Hey, 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 you know, that prediction, hey, man, y'all close around there. Y'all, hey, I already <laughs> had my head. I'm, I'm, I'm going Bears. I, I think it's going to be a defensive game. Aaron Rodgers is going to have some mishaps, and, and Chicago going to make some plays, and Matt going to put, put Aaron Rodgers on his back. But uh, I'm, I'm, I said it was going to be 20 to 17. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Take it. 
ain't no discount so, double yeah. checks in Chicago. You got to pay full Not price, today. Aaron. Right, yeah. right. Hey, right. Bernard, Absolutely. It looks like yeah. we owe Bree some Bob Chins. Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Bob Chins, man. Them lobster tails. <laughs> right. Come on right. down. So, right. I, mean, I don't have a nice prediction. I don't have Mike's yet. I know Mike's been on the road a lot over the weekend, but let me just do a, a quick recap. I have Tammy taking the Bears 24-20. I I'm taking the Bears 21-17. Plank taking the Bears 27-26. Guys taking the Bears 24-21. Jay taking the Bears 26-16. Lemmyhead is taking the Bears 2017. So either all is going to be tied still for another week or none is going to right. gain ground. <laughs> right, 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 right. Hey, but before right. we wrap up the broadcast, I, I want to uh, ask our guests a couple of questions as far as, one, uh, his golf foundation, if he could give us a little background on his golf foundation that is for um, children with down, born with Down syndrome. Yeah. And if you could, if you could kind of give us um, a background on how you started that, and you know, and any you know, in any upcoming golf tournaments that you may have. Uh, well, what we do is at my golf tournament, uh, my my daughter has Down syndrome. She's uh, twenty four years old, Alyssa Stinson, and uh, that's my baby. She's uh, you know, she's uh, just a bundle of joy. So what we done is in the tournament, we raise money for organizations who can't raise money for themselves. So organizations that are out there that's trying to that's struggling, you know, maybe you need eight hundred, maybe you need a thousand, maybe you need fifteen hundred dollars or things like that. We try to raise money for those organizations. So we have a golf term because we started the golf term just having fun, just having drinks, guys out there just uh betting and having fun and say what we're we gonna use the money for. So one one year we uh, bought baseball gloves, next year we did uh ball helmets, you know, and certain stuff like that. So we just continue to carry it on. So so it's got so big now that you know, we donate to the high schools and things like that. So that's that's the main thing. Last year it was donated to our high school, Ebony Worth in high school. Well, that's Cliff Branch went to the high school, Mike Singletary went to the high school, and uh, Otis Taylor and myself. And uh, there's a lot of guys, Chris Hudson, Rob Wilson, you know, just guys galore come out of Worthing. But uh, that's what we do for uh, my organization. Just have fun and enjoy life because, you know, life's too short and, you know, anything can happen at any day, you know, so we try to make sure everybody be happy. Okay, and that that foundation name is Oh Lemuel Stinson, Lemuel Stinson Foundation. Lemuel okay. Stinson Foundation. And you can it's on we we have our webpage, so you can go to Lemuel Stinson uh Lemuel Stinson dot foundation and uh go to the website and you'll see all the stuff that we do on there. Okay, Lemonhead, if you could drop that Lemonhead, if you could drop that on on our page, if you could drop that okay. on the Bears Banner page, uh Ooh, do that. Right. And, okay. You know, no please problem. do that no to problem. see if we could, uh, you know, see if we, if a, if, if the Bears banter fans can, oh, uh, yeah. you know, you know, get whatever they can. You oh, know, yeah. we, don't, we don't, we don't, mind. Anything. That you get five cent, ten cent, twenty cent, it all adds up. You know, we started out just giving like fifty dollars, and uh, then we just kept on going and raised up, and kept going and kept going, and it's just been having fun with it. You know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I have like I have shoulder surgery coming up, but I I I go to the golf tournaments and sign and uh, you know, Dan Pastorini has a tournament down here. You know, uh, Larry Durka, baseball player, he has a tournament down here. So, um, you go to those guys, but I'll be in a shoulder sling. I can't play no golf or do anything like that. So I'll be in a, a sling on on Wednesday. So I have shoulder surgery on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Oh, hey man, prayers oh, up, bro. Good luck, bro. Right. Appreciate right. it. Appreciate hey, it. What, what, one other. That's, question. What, that's what me hitting all them guys and coming over the middle. Right. <laughs> but you hit them. Okay. Yeah, I try to punish them too. <laughs> hey, 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 back in the day. One of the most dangerous places was in the middle of a field for an offensive player. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, uh, people had alligator arms <laughs> across that middle. Oh, yeah, yeah That's now, they, now they're now. just stopping in the middle of the field. I mean, they set their route down in the middle of the field. Man, oh, they put yeah. tables out with tablecloths and all type of horse <laughs> donors and stuff. Hey, I'm going to go across here in a seven-yard go. Will you meet me here? Sure, I will. Hey, friends, man, you come in the middle of the field. You're supposed to be, don't cancel me, culture, dead. Oh, yeah. Hey, can you also uh, share with the people who are out there watching us right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch TV 
What is Pro Bliss 32? Well, Pro Bliss 32 is the organization that we have athletes. It's just nothing but athletes and, and guys that go do events. So if you call and say, hey, man, I got a guy that I'm, hey, I'm man, doing I this here and I, I need somebody to come out to the uh, event, you know, give us a call and we'll see what guy in that area, see if he want to come out to the event. And, uh, you know, if they pay the guy to come out, we'll get him to come out and pay the guy. We don't take no money from it. We let the guys make the money and do what they do because – Nowadays, these guys are not making a lot of money, but these guys that are playing today are making a lot of money. So it's kind of hard to get those guys out. But the older guys that's, that was ballers and that was players are uh, guys that can uh, come out and just, you know, shake your hand, talk to you. Because, you know, you like to hear from a, a guy that played in the game, but he wasn't a major guy, but he made some big plays in the game before. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we have. We have a lot of guys that's in the Houston area. We have over 2,500 guys in the Houston area that go out to events. You know, we had guys go to a football game and sit down in a football game. Okay. Hey, thank you so much from that. From listening to you, I know we're going to wrap this show up in a few minutes. I know we went a little bit over, but that's that's okay. What we do have normally on Fridays is we started last year this thing called Football One-on-One. Mm -hmm. Football one-on-one is just a little short tutorial that we have for uh, people who are kind of novice football watchers. And from listening to you, I'm hoping that you come on again and maybe do a football one-on-one as well as do a show like this with us as well. But like, for example, a good example, like what we did with one of the football one-on-one, Jay was a uh, play college football at Alcorn State. And Jay, yeah. So Jay I did. Couldn't go to Alcorn, dude. I couldn't go to Alcorn. I got that. My mom seen that uh, photo album. All them beautiful oh, women in there. I said, I can't make that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go. My mom said, thank you like that school, man. Mama, I go to that school. I'm never going to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. All, hey, that was one thing about all the black colleges, man. I said, no, nah, I better go over here. Because if I go there, I'm not going to make it to class. <laughs> man. So, so basically on uh, football one-on-one, Jay, for example, did one on uh, the receiver route tree. Uh, and, and Plank did a, a football one-on-one on uh, defense. I did one on uh, b- uh, five basic offensive formation, and Guy did one on free agencies. So I would really like if you could come on and, you know, one day in the future and do one on maybe like cornerback techniques, you know, and I yeah. think it could be really informative for people, uh, especially our high school players, and just putting in, you know, and what kind of work that you put in to become a professional athlete. Because you have so mm-hmm. many athletes today that you, you know, like for example, uh, you're about what five ten, five nine, and, you know. But you got guys now, five nine. Okay, you got guys now that's six one, six, six two. Three. They always been the biggest guy, six three. Yeah. And in high school, they breeze through it. Then when they get to college, they finally starting to get somebody that their size. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. they really haven't put in some of the basic work, and then they get to a college program and they get depressed because why yeah. this is the first time in their life they really had to compete with anybody and some yeah. of their techniques and different things. So, I, I thought maybe with this football one on one, not only just for the uh, people who watch, but also for young athletes to be able to get some free advice on what they could do. Oh, that's not a problem, man. Just let me know. I, I love doing something like that because you know when you when you're good in school, they I mean you you're so much better than everybody else, but you don't have the technique. And then when you get to college, it's five other guys that just as good as you. And then now all of a sudden you say, "Whoa, or better. I thought I was I thought I was the best coach now. The mother four in front of you right now, the best. <laughs> so you got to think about that. So yeah, I mean I have no problem with coming out. I mean you know talking about it, doing it. It's always good to put the cornerbacks with techniques of the coverage because that's the problem. A lot a lot of guys don't understand coverages and the techniques within the coverages. Wow, good, all awesome. good. Awesome. Hey, any, any of y'all have any more questions before we close out Beautiful. the broadcast? Beautiful. Now, I just wanted to say one thing, you know, as far as uh, Lemonade is concerned, man. Hey, we appreciate you coming on, man. You know, Absolutely. and uh, we, yeah, try to, we try to create a platform for fans, man. You know, we're not into all that. 
I did this, that, and the other. You know, we just imagine us as like five people just sitting at a table who are really enthused about the sport and don't just want to look at it like we're we're we are type of people that look at somebody who was a six two four three guy and we see him, but we like the guy who's the underdog that nobody said was gonna be okay, who came in and knew every play on the offensive defense, motor twenty four seven, played hard, balls to the wall, heart and hustle. And appreciate we appreciate your time, man. Thank you much, man. And I appreciate what you're doing Absolutely. with the foundation, man. God Absolutely. bless you. Bro. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anybody else have any? Yes. One fun question. How did you get your nickname? Huh? How did you get your nickname? Well, well, Coach in the Room. And, and Mike Dicker, they always say Lemuel, Lemuel Stinson. I say, man, my name is Lemuel. If you look <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what's so wild, I got my, my grandfather named Lemuel, my daddy named Lemuel, I'm Lemuel, and my son is Lemuel, and my my baby boy is Lemuel. So I said, they're going to have to go through what I went through, Lemuel. So, you know, they always the kid. So Mike Dicker just said, hey, you know what? We're just going to call you Lemonhead. And I like <laughs> After that, I got after that I got a check for Ferrari Pan Candy come in. I kept on going from there. <laughs> it is what it is. It is yeah, what it is. is. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome, brother. Yeah, man, we like thank you, man. We thank you for coming on, man. I thank you. I really thank do. You guys. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, man, for coming hey, on. Hey man, man, I wish I, I wish y'all all the success. I wish y'all all the success, man. I wish y'all to have fun and enjoy. And, and y'all keep doing what you're doing because the Bear fans love it. You know, it's a lot of people doing podcasts. There's only a few of them I go on. And uh you guys will be, you know, y'all call me at any time. You got any questions, dial me up and put me on. I'll pull up and I'll pull over and talk about it. I appreciate it. Man, we appreciate that. I appreciate that. We'd like to thank everybody who's watching us tonight on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch TV. And we'd like to thank our guest, Lemuel Lemonhead Stenson, for coming and staying with us tonight. Uh, not only sharing his, his background in football, but also sharing his analysis of the upcoming game as we go into Packers Bears weekend. So we'd like to thank everybody and have a nice evening. Peace.